All right, folks, how you doing? Welcome to the Stage 4 Recap Show. I am your caster, Hodohori, and today we've got a great and interesting show for you to everyone on the channel. Hello, 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 hello. Sorry for the technical delays. Uh, we were uh, actually, I lost power earlier today and was unable to do some of the edits that I needed to at the last minute, and Direboid also was trying to help me with edits and so. So let's take a look at what the sh what is on the show today. So we're broken up the show into three different segments. So segment one here is a recap of stage four. What is going on? What were the records, the stats, the top games of the stage? We've got a great highlights video for you for that particular segment. Segment two is a round table discussion with the outlet teams that did not make the playoffs. We want to make sure that everybody gets a voice here in the outlet tournament. And a lot of the teams, uh, eight teams did not make the playoffs playoffs, so we will not be featuring them going forward, but I wanted to make sure that all of them had a say with regards to how the league went. They can give their opinions. They will answer questions. They want to, uh, we will also ask them how the league treated them, how did they do, and would they be able to do this again if they wanted to? Was it too long? Was it too short? We'll find out from those teams. And then segment three, of course, will be your playoff preview. We will be previewing what is going on in the playoffs what uh what times are the games i don't think the times have been finalized but we will have the matchups for you here on the channel so you will know exactly who is playing who so let's start off with uh our recap of stage four so in stage four it was divided up into two different sections the strix and the snowy and you will see that wsol in the snowy division ended up going six and oh the only team without a loss in the snowy division they were followed by the unicorns, rinse and shine, and the new boys, uh, new boys and girls in town, transcendent. They took the place of AFT and did a wonderful job, actually going three and three in the snowy division. Nobody had tape on them, so that also probably helped. But they did a really good job here in the snowy division. They were followed up by Oasis, Don't Envious, Deadlock Gang, who had a pretty rough stage four, but did still qualify through the playoffs uh, due to their stage one and two performance. And then Monkey, Monkey, Monkey who ended up going 1-5 and five, uh, in the Snowy Division. In the Strix Division, it was Los Muertos taking the crown away from Microsoft Excelsior. They did not let Excelsior win Stage 4. Look at that map differential, plus 15. Good job by them. They uh, they take the stop, uh, top spot above Microsoft Excelsior. It was a plus 11. Uh, click for heads, banned by the way, followed up in 3 and 4. But uh, Vote Meme today, Top Ramen, Lotus, and Naptime make up the rest of the Strix Division. Congratulations to Lotus also getting a win there on the final day, going 1-5 and five and not uh, actually getting blanked out there in the final day of Stage 4. Let's see how that affected the overall standings of the league. You'll see the big red line. That ended up becoming the line of demarcation when it came to the playoffs, and it is Microsoft Excelsior who take the number one overall seed uh, with a plus 60 differential and a 21-3 and three record. They were followed by WSOL, banned by the way. The Unicorns, click for heads, Muertos, Deadlocking, and Rinse and Shine. Oasis Esports, who had an equal record as the same at Rinse and Shine, unfortunately did not make the playoffs due to map differential. We will be featuring that game here shortly. Uh, they were then followed by Top Ramen, Envious, Transcendent, VMT, Naptime, Monkey Monkey Monkey, and Lotus. No Shanghais here, as the bottom two teams did get wins. Monkey 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 did get a win, as well as Lotus uh, in this uh, in in this particular stage, as well as the previous stages before, so no, no Shanghai teams here. Nobody goes 0 in 24, and that is something I would love to see. Like to see. So, how did how did that well? How did stage four fare for everyone? There were only really two new maps in stage four. So you were there were really Rialto, which was actually used in stage one as a tiebreaker, and Hollywood. Here, finally, teams actually got to play Rialto for real. You didn't have to play five maps, and it was WSOL and MSXL who did the best on Rialto, going perfect 3-0 and on the chances that they had Rialto. Six teams tied at 2-1. and They were Oasis 
Nexus Transcendent, uh, Top Ramen, uh, Furious Unicorns, C4H, and Banned by the Way. On Hollywood, uh, MSXL again take top spot with a 3 0 record on Hollywood, but it was Don't Envy Us with a 2 0 and 1 record showing up on Hollywood, thing, uh, showing the rest of the teams that showing how it's done. They were one of the few teams that did tie on Hollywood because it is a hybrid map, so that does happen. Six other teams tied at 2 and 1 uh, Los Muertos, WSOL, Banned by the Way, Top Ramen. Furious Unicorns, and Click for Heads. We didn't put any Elio statistics on here because it was a map that was previously used and it was a map that was uh, the only a tiebreaker. So not many teams actually got to play Elios in Stage 4. So we didn't bother putting up the statistics, but it was also, um, but it is also a map that is going to be featured going forward in the playoffs. So you will see some Elios here in the playoffs. So now, so what does that lead up to? So that leads up to crazy games into Stage 4. We wanted to highlight some of the games that were going on in Stage 4 because a lot of the games actually had playoff ramifications. Uh, there were three specific games that we actually uh, that we actually put up here that we thought had the most sort of sort of hype slash playoff ramifications in court, uh, afforded to them regarding the uh, the stage four games. And they were uh, Top Ramen versus a band, by the way. Uh, the epic game between Oasis Esports and Rinse and Shine that, de that basically decided the final spot in the Snowy Division. And Los Muertos versus Band by the way. Los Muertos actually looking a little uh, sketchy there at the end. They needed this win over Band by the way uh, in order to qualify for the playoffs based on what is going on. We've got a great highlight video featuring these three games and I think a couple other highlights here in the Stage 4 recap video. Let's go ahead and get that started now. Enjoy. So they're taking the high ground once again, taking the high ground. They want to get to this point as fast as they can and take a pick. Unfortunately, it looks like it got forced out there, so they're not going to have it for the Dragon Blade. It's going to be a fight they need to win. Tanzino also gets Paternal Shiva. All the kills are going the way of Top Ramen. See what NBNO does here. NBNO goes for the charge. He does get Pseudo. Oh, big shot. He takes out Raxling as well. It looks like he's going to get Brit Boy and says, No, don't take my healers, but no. But Johnny Dar is bringing out the Dragon Blade, and that's actually going to take out Grumpy Zero. So those Mercers with a nice push. But a bomb here onto the point. Gets three. Oh! They couldn't hide from it. There was nothing they could do. Dragon Blade coming out from Raxling, but no. Big bomb from Lumbo. Max is trying to do as much possible. He does get an Earth shot. It's pretty big. If he can get some picks right now. And it does take out the Spectanium. A Graviton catches three players oh. here of Top Ramen, but a great wall prevents any damage from coming in. Yeah, and a Graviton surge already. Okay, and another Graviton surge through the side of those parts. This is reverse. And he's going to release the ult. Grip goes down. Ult's coming out from Brickboy here, but Lumbo gets two once again. Ult's coming out from Raxling, and Raxling trying to get two. He does get two. He gets Lumbo and Bomber, and that's huge. Benzino with a huge charge takes Internal Shiva a clear out of Horizon, pretty much, as it looks like uh, an ult here over the back. What a wall! Loka is actually going to take out Naming Charge. That's actually pretty big. And Eternal Shiva's gonna bring back Grumpy Zero Lokai! He's coming back with his main! This time around, we see them going around. Waste ones go around. Shatter might come out. Shatter takes out Raxley. He gets out of position. Charge! Counter charge! Oh! Oh! And so gets another big two kill! A huge stop right there! They're not even gonna need Pandu's ult here. Booth Ninja does have his ult. He could make the difference here. Tyre's coming out. He can let his team get a thing. He does get two! That's another big tire coming up from Loose Ninja there. They can get those nades. It can turn Ooh. the fight around for them. Yeah, and speaking about nades, Grumpy Zero getting a kill into Splatanium, getting a kill to Raven. And that's already Grumpy Zero. It's actually popping off against three. And oh, nice. So for Fox taking out Navy Stars. And wow. <laughs> Grumpy Zero almost has his red tire one fight in before the point even unlocks. Sharp shot here. Trying to get anybody, but it, it's... It's going the way of Top Ramen here. They're wiping Ban by the way out. They want to stay in Owlet. Only two people left here as the rocket knocks both of them down. So finishes them off. And there is life. Ah, uh, space jam remix. But big, big, oh my god. He just unlocked the achievement. Most bridges are down. Uh, Zeno back in low guys. He's going to be out with that fair brawl. It does take out a lot of the members. Boxy does fall down. And Brev does also fall down. But it's just only Jelly Doe on the point. We all he can, but oh, it's gonna be Deep Momo with that Earth Shatter. Do use the Lucio ult here on point. They're going for the win right now. So, Zoe gets a huge kill on Shop Shot and on Foxer. This is not going right for Ban, by the way. 
He's going into the back line. Tyre gets shot down. Laxley has his blade. He wants to make use of this. But no, Lumbo's high noon. But he does get Lumbo with his own high noon. But it's gonna be Raven bringing out his tactical visor, taking out two for the side of Bam. By the way, this is looking real nice. And Raven making it three. Belligerent here from Top Ramen. They just don't want to go home. Oh, oh and a huge charge here takes out Chowboy. Now Spook getting the uh, nano boost here as he actually is going <laughs> going ham now. Los Muertos just hasn't been able to push through. Oh, and Logan tries to use that fair barrage, but gets denied by naming charge as he goes straight for the face. And yeah, and in comes the rest of the side of Eternal Shiva. And another Earth Shadow is actually going to take out Boxer. It'll be a bomb that's probably going to take out two, and indeed it does. That's going to make a tank out for the side of Bam, by the way. I'm probably going to flaw my blade here. Yes, I am. He's going to dive it. He's going to get one already. He wants the two. Can he get it? He does. High news coming out the Lumbo with the high noon. Gets two though. This could be payback. Raxley by some cyberspace. No, you took out Raxley. Oh my god. Oh, but an Earth set for the side of Breath. He's gonna take out Jelly Doe and Naming Shark. It's gonna be falling up off her mech. And this is gonna be the stash for the side of those Mertos. Zarya here, Lumbo on the Zarya. And Britboy gets a huge ult, but no. Is he able to take it out? No, Lose the Ninja, able to get two. It's gonna be down, Brit Boy. Can he get Lumbo? Lumbo goes down. This time around, it looks like they might hold it here, but no. Pandu with a one-man hold. Look at this. He's on the pain. He's on the point, trying to survive as best he can, waiting for the reinforcements to come in. Mailman gets taken out. The bomb is from the fight, and that's gonna be again. Oh, Brett no. getting taken out. Chip Lumbo is doing a phenomenal job, and that's gonna be actually Boxer hooking right now. That's here left on the clock. Big Ananade, there's nobody on the point. They're trying to start Foxer. Foxer gets the nano boost as he's trying to sort of kill the rest of Top Ramen. As they go, Breath gets two big kills. That's gonna do it. Again, this cannot be real. Jeff Momo is doing ridiculous <laughs> on this Roadhog right now. He's looking like the best Roadhog in the league. He comes with a whole heart from behind. And that's gonna be it. Jeff Momo doing all he can in his power to deny Bam. By the way, that's gonna be Los Muertos winning the map, the series, three to two. And that's gonna be all, ladies and gents.
All right, folks, we are back. And uh, the first thing I wanted to show was the all-star game remember there is the all-star game here for outlet that will be featured here on october 5th uh through the 7th we will have actually all-star festivities i want to make sure i read the proper announcement that bort wrote me so for the players all-star nominations are due tonight wednesday the 26th by 11 59 p.m uh the aftermath players were actually added also to the voting sheet and it is editable so if you have not nominated or voted for the all-star game please put your votes in tonight uh for the all-star games if you have forgotten uh for coaches mvp nominations for the that will be announced during the all-star game are also uh actually due in on by the 11 the 26th the end of today at 11 59 p.m so coaches get your mvp nominations in for players get your all-star kicks in we want to make sure that you get all of that stuff in for the all-star vote. Now, uh, we cart start with our next section, which is the round table. This might be a bit of a CF because there are about 11 people here in the channel. So I will try my best to keep it uh, as ordered as possible, but this is an opportunity for the teams uh, that were in outlet that did not qualify for the playoffs. I am about fairness and we wanted to give a voice to everyone and make sure that everyone had a chance to be featured and say their piece and, you know, shout out to anybody out there who is watching in Twitch land. But I wanted to bring everybody up here so that we could get their opinions on the league and what we think that maybe they thought that we could improve upon. Was there anything that we could actually sort of uh, change or was, did they have issues with the timing? I'd love to just hear from everyone. So, uh, I'm going to go down the Discord list. The The list here might not match up with regards to what's on screen, but I will try my best. Uh, representing a Don't NVS, it was Uwu, Sinfu Wu. <laughs> Just, hello. Hello. So you'll be representing Don't NVS. For representing Oasis Esports, it is Brit Boy. How are you doing, Brit Boy? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. Representing a vote meme today, it is Deja Vu. Deja Vu, how you doing? Hey, I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. Uh, representing awesome. representing that team, Top Ramen MK3, it is War and Peace. How you doing, War and Peace? I think he's still muted. Uh, I think he forgot. My bad. I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. That is all right. <laughs> uh, representing Transcendent, uh, it is a foot mob. How you doing, foot mob? Hey, really glad to be here. Thanks. All right. And uh, is Oh My God Cal here? Yes. Oh My God Cal representing nap time. Uh, how you doing, Oh My Hello. God Cal? Hello. And then uh, I have here representing Lotus Freckles, but I think we have Ivy Dragon and Phoenix here instead. Is that right? Hi there. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so Ivy Dragon and Phoenix here in for Lotus. And somebody was supposed to get a hold of Fly Roper. Uh, the coach for Monkey, Monkey, Monkey. Unfortunately, I don't think he was able to join us today. If he is, I'm sorry. I wasn't able to get you here into the channel. But uh, and that means we don't have a Monkey X3 representative. But we will try our best to to sort of power on. So the, uh, the, the members here, all of the teams did not qualify. But we wanted to make sure that they got a voice. So I wanted to send my first question out to Mr. Brit Boy. Mr. Brit Boy, you were a caster here for the league. You played for Oasis Esports. You're actually a Diamond graduate, too. Uh, you are speaking for your team and your personal experience here in, in Owlet. What did you think of the tournament, and what would you say to the admins if you had a shot with regards to uh, what your experience here was and the sum of the 12 weeks that you played here in Owlet? Oh, yeah, for sure. Um. I, I absolutely love Alec. I love everything it stands for. I came in 1700 and I came out 3k. Mm -hmm. So I think Alec is one of the one of the best places around to you know grow, meet some new people, have some great friends. In regards to what what I would say to uh <laughs> to the admins if I had one one shot is hashtag free quant 2017. <laughs> 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 All right, so let's go. Uh, let's go to War and Peace here. War and Peace, you are uh, representing Top Ramen, but you were also, uh, I think, at one point a, a, a free agent because I think you, you you started on a different team. Is that right? Yeah, that is correct. I started on Furious Unicorns for two stages. Mm -hmm. Then I was put on their inactive roster, and things didn't really work out, so I was released back into the free agent pool. And 
not even a day later, it's picked up by Top Ramen. So uh, can you talk about like the, the free agent standings? I mean, it, it, it is somewhat the a little bit of the outlet wilderness, let's say, but you went through the whole yeah. thing. <laughs> so you went through yeah. the whole thing. So for explain to uh, people who are watching who might have to go through the free agent pool next year. It's like, what did you sort of have to go through with regards to sort of getting back onto another team? So it was a lot of reaching out and trying to ask, hey, do you need a main support? Do you need that? Um, and it was really stressful, honestly. Like, I, it was hard to be positive about it. It was really hard for me because I was so down on myself about it. Like, I thought, no, this is because I suck. And, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was it's really rough to sort of go through if you're not expecting it. Mm -hmm. um, and, honestly, what you really have to do is just keep on trying. Just reach out. Ask, hey, do you need a support player? Do you need a tank player? Do you need someone who can be really toxic by apologizing all the time? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much what I did. Ah, uh, but but you did end up uh, hooking up with Top Ramen here, and I just yeah. uh, overall, what did you consider your experience here uh, uh, in Alad? Did you find it as encouraging as Brick Boy? I mean, like, did you find yourself improving as a player overall? Uh, through I the definitely found myself improving. Uh, I I'm a lot less anxious. I don't think I've actually freaked out in a competitive match mm -hmm. in a while, so that's pretty good. <laughs> um. <laughs> I really enjoy uh, being, I mean, right now I'm kind of taking a break because my classes just started up again and I'm taking some classes that will go into my major, maybe even towards med school. So we'll see. Um, <laughs> well, but, well, good to hear about yeah, that. Yeah, still hard stuck in gold. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It takes some time to get out of gold. So we'll see you probably in, in platinum and diamond for sure later on. So my next question is to Ivy Dragon and Phoenix, uh, representatives from NAP, uh, from Lotus here. Uh you guys had a tough time uh, through the league uh, with only two wins. Did Was it hard to stay positive through the league? I know there's a lot of tough competition in the league, but I got nothing but uh, positive reviews from Team Lotus, and we, I was cheering you guys on any time that I would stream your games. But let take us through the process of going through the 12 weeks uh, playing in the outlet. I mean, was it a positive experience for, for members of Team Lotus? Um, yeah, I would definitely say so. Um, the thing with Lotus is mostly through this tournament, we had a lot of problems with our players not being available most of the time. Especially um, during the summer. Yeah, so because of that, there was times when we had subs a lot of the time. Um, so that synergy that we had worked on over the ages wasn't necessarily there any longer. Mm -hmm. um, we definitely, so specifically in chat, I'm always pretty happy-go-lucky. Um, I like to make conversation, um, and I know we did rub some teams the wrong way, but I feel like having the mindset of just having fun and learning really got us far in this tournament, um, because it meant even with having just subs and even with all the losses, we still had a great time and we still learned. That's great. I mean, like, so if you had a comment with regards to the timing of the matches, you see, you said you guys had you the most issues with regards to getting people to sort of show up because of the summertime was it more the the time around the the summer or was it more sunday night tuesday night monday night it, where that was the was issue with you guys summer. Uh -huh. um a lot of us are in college right now and a lot of us are very active within the universities that we go to mm -hmm. um and over the summer a lot of us were doing stuff like interns internships over their other life problems um i personally run two esports groups with on my campus oh. um so with stuff like that, it made it difficult for everybody to get there at the same time. Um, as summer kind of wound down, it became a lot easier, though, for everybody to show up. Yeah, I found that like uh, towards the end of August, as we were getting into the into the sort of the neck deep into stage four, you definitely see less attendance problems from everyone, and it seemed like that that was it. So um, for for I want to go next to Foot Mob from Transcendent. Uh, Footmob, you actually have a little bit of an interesting experience because Transcendent actually replaced uh, Aftermath in Stage 4. Did you have any expectations going into this tournament, or was this more you guys wanted to just get your foot in the door and get some time in before and then maybe get ready for the second season uh, of Owlet, possibly? Because they were, because of the way that you come in, you never got to play a full schedule. Mm -hmm. So how did, how, did you, uh, how did you sort of like react to the league when you guys sort of joined? So it took three weeks for us to get notification that we were in and we were signed up even before that. Um, 
So when I was talking to the team about the potential of joining Outlet, I told them the only thing I'm really looking for from you guys is for you guys to compete and for you guys to have a good time. And uh, that was really the constant message I kept with my team throughout Stage 4. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it did pose some difficulties for us, for sure, because a lot of the teams have been playing against each other for, you know, three stages and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also kind of provided a benefit to us because no one really knew anything about us. So a lot of our strats, a lot of our players, um, Genji Main, for instance, right? Mm-hmm. Nasty Widow player just clicked heads the whole entire stage. Um, our tanks, the way we played, um, you know, we were kind of an unknown to most people. So it, it was, it was in a way, kind of a uh, blessing in disguise. And uh, I think we took advantage of it to, for the most part with our 3-3 three and three record in Stage 4. But, yeah, uh, yeah, you guys did fantastic. I mean, would there be anything specific that you would want to say to the admins uh, regarding your specific experience uh, with regards to the league? I mean, like you, you only experienced a, a one stage, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But overall, um, like, what was your reaction to the teams in the league? I mean, like, was everybody really kind? I mean, the admins do what they needed to do. I mean, like, uh, what did you think overall as a as a league? Uh, that outlet did it give you the satisfaction and what you were right. actually looking for i mean compared to the the other kind of like leagues and let's say tournaments right we were planning on joining i think outlet was probably the the best run mm-hmm. um it it was also kind of nice just to have a set schedule um the only real difficulty we had sometimes was matches on monday and tuesday just because of school nights for a lot of the kids in our team um but other than that i mean everything was very very smooth you know there's I know there's kind of like a question of like whether or not like the season was even kind of too long and we can't really answer that question, you know? So, um, but for us, it was, you know, I I don't think it could have gone any smoother, right? Like we, we heard about three weeks before entering in that we were going to be joining up. Um, so that gave us time to prepare. And, um, you know, a week before our first match, we were, you know, officially introduced into the league and, um, that was really nice. And, you know, I think a lot of the players just, they straight up just really enjoyed it. It was something they looked forward to every single weekend and um, every single match on Tuesday as well. So, yeah, overall, I, I don't have any, like, critical comments of the admin at all um, just because of how smooth our experience was. Fantastic. So let, let's go to our next uh, next uh, person here. It would be Deja Vu from A Vote Meme Today. How you doing, Deja Vu? Oh, boy. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> so, so speak to your experience here. And VMT was always on the outside looking into the playoffs, but you guys almost had a shot there uh, through Stage 3 and Stage 4 if you would have kept some wings up. You played the role of spoiler uh, a lot here in, in Stage 4, but t- take me through the experience of what Vote Meme Today sort of went through in the latter stages here uh, in Outlet. Ooh, oh, boy. So... Uh, I actually joined in at the end of stage two, I believe. So I didn't actually play until stage three. Okay. So, yeah, it was a little bit of a struggle for us. I feel like it was. Uh, we ran in with a few issues with players and stuff. I'm not good at talking, by the way. <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. But just the, just tell me, it's like, did you have fun? Did your team have a good time? I mean, like, were there any issues that you had in the two stages that you played in three and four that maybe would have, like, that could be improved upon? Because we want to make sure that every team gets a sort of voice here. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh, overall, it was a really good experience. I know everyone had fun. Towards the, um, the end of stage four, we had a lot of difficulty with planning. The games always ended up getting planned really late, so we weren't, we would, uh, weren't able to have a lot of players with us. Mm-hmm. And it was a little difficult at the end for us, but overall, I think it was a really good experience. Yeah. Well, would there be anything that you would suggest that we could sort of improve upon in the league that, uh, as a player uh, for for Vote Meme today, that maybe would help you guys out in maybe uh, the second season? Um, I don't know. I guess just more communication, I guess. Okay. I, I don't know. Overall, I think everything ran pretty smoothly. Okay. And then, uh, oh my god, Cal, how you doing? Hello. <laughs> how about your experience? Well, can you tell me what, like, how Outlet treated you uh, in, in these later stages here, in say stages like three and four, with regards to playing with nap time and what, uh, how nap time sort of re- reacted to Outlet in general? Um, well, for those who don't really know me, I'm um, the coach, the head okay. coach of um, nap time. So mm-hmm. I never actually like played any matches with them. I did okay. coach them a lot and then um, sat in on their matches as well. Um, I think the team suffered a lot from um, just having lost um, a lot of players um, in the first two seasons. 
And then they also lost um, a lot of coaches as well. So that kind of is why the team struggled a lot um, in the first two seasons. And even though like we didn't lose or we didn't win any of the three or four, um, I'm not season, sorry, um, stages three and four, um, on our record, it says we, we didn't win very much, Mm -hmm. but they had a huge growth. Um, if you just like looked at their matches, they went from getting steamrolled to actually holding in, in, um, overtime for each map. So just for that, I'm pretty proud of them. Yeah, so um, so overall, as an experience, though, like, did you like the way that the uh, the matches were set up? Like, like the Owl tournament, did you have any issues with like the four game matches? Would you like uh, the would the would you be interested in sort of a map pick format, or what did you think overall uh, of the games that you sort of coached and participated in with your teams with regards to the formatting of the of the league? I think the formatting, the setup of um, how the maps are played and how the stages kind of went um, is fine. The only issue that we um, kind of ran into is that we kept we kept getting randomly paired um, with some of the top tier teams, and so there was a huge uh, skill gap okay. between. Um, so we would obviously be we played against um, like the top two in the in the league, and then we're obviously the bottom three. So that that was a little frustrating for um, our team to consistently have to play um, against some of them. So there's occasionally times where we almost wanted to just forfeit because it, what it didn't, uh, it didn't help our team learn anything. Mm. And I think that's the, the problem with um, our league is we got, we kind of just forget that the whole point of it is to learn. Mm -hmm. Um, And so at that point they weren't learning, um, but they still, they were still striving um, to kind of just play through everything. No, I can understand it can be very, very frustrating. And because the league is sort of like a wide range, because you've got gold players, even silver players, ranging all the way to diamond, uh, that the uh, that the skill ratings for the teams can vary drastically. So that is a uh, that is something that definitely needs to be addressed sometimes, I think, with the league. And I think I know that they, they want to do that. So, uh, Uwu, uh, for Don't NVS, how are you? Hello, I'm fine. How uh, are you? I'm fine also. So Don't Envious uh, was in uh, the, the outlet all the way from stage one through four and were part of some epic matches. Can you tell us about like Envious's experience in, in Owlet? Uh, you guys didn't end up making the playoffs, but there were some games in which like you definitely uh, there were you were very, very tight in and take a lot of three twos and a lot of matches that you were very, very uh, sort of competitive in. But overall as a league, what did you guys think overall as participating in the Outlet tournament? I think everything was fine other than like my own personal preferences for the league. Like, um, I don't know if this has been implemented yet or if I've noticed it, but like, uh, kind of how contenders does things like, or not contenders, but like loser picks map or whatever, Yeah, yeah. or like a shorter season. But like, generally I think the team has come to a consensus that it's not like tournament based on our results. It's more like everything based within internal things i guess yeah so like a lot of the maps uh, the maps and stuff are set so that way like uh the way that because you're given the map pools ahead of time you can sort of practice and train so that you don't have to be ready for a crazy amount of maps and not know what to play um yeah oh yeah so like so you were happy with the formatting like overall is the experience did you guys have any issues uh regarding the timing or did did Envious really have any sort of player issues? Did the did the league last too long? I mean, like, we did least the 12, 12 weeks. You guys were committed through the entire thing, but it, were there any issues that you would want to bring up? So if the, if you wanted to talk to the admins and say, hey, I would love it if, if this was different. I think, personally, I'd just make the season or, like, the stages a bit shorter because playing on for too long can cause burnout. Like... One example I'd have is Effect from Dallas Fuel. We all know what happened to him. He yeah. kind of went a little crazy. Mm-hmm. And, like, when players play for too long, it kind of makes them question why they're playing. And, like, it's sometimes, like, for a team like DNVU with internal, like, struggles, yeah, like, things within our own things, it kind of feels like, why are we playing? Like, we're struggling within ourselves, but we also, like, question how we want to do things, why we want to do things, and, like other team related things that question our 
like motivations and everything. Yeah, I mean, it, the the league lasted the way that it was structured because you were only having two matches a week and there were only six matches per stage. You know, 12 weeks is a long time to actually play. So maybe if you were to squeeze in three games during the week, maybe shorten up the stages a little bit, that might be helpful. So to some people, so let's uh let's go back here. Uh, we have to sort of limit the time here with regards to the round table. So I want to go back uh to Brit Boy. Uh, Brit Boy, how are you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Hey, uh, just final thoughts here on the league and what you wanted to say to everybody here out in Twitch land, because we're just going to start to run down everybody here, uh, with regards to uh the uh the round table. So was there anything oh, that you sure. wanted to say to everyone out in Twitch or to, to your team, Oasis Esports, or what Oasis wanted to say to everybody in the league? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, I, me personally, I just want to say thank you to everyone who had put out on and you guys are all volunteer and you guys are amazing. Uh, I'll keep it brief. I want to say thank you to Luke for climbing me into fucking diamond. Like what? <laughs> um, uh, I want to say thank you to my teammates for always being supportive and not toxic. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> And uh, that's pretty much it. Okay. Uh, and the ab of course, the admins are crazy good. These guys are insane. <laughs> Even if a couple, a couple of mishaps, but they'll be fine. All right. Okay. And then, uh, Warren, uh, final thoughts from you with regards to any shout outs to anybody out there in Twitch land? Uh, a huge shout out to my friends over at Top Ramen 3. We had a really tough so uh, stage, I guess, the stage. We had five support mains, uh, mains on our team, which was a it was pretty rough to uh, <laughs> it was to a little bit rough, but we had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a great ending match against Lotus, so a huge shout out to the Lotus girls. You all were awesome, and Blue and the rest of the guy, uh, guys and uh, Fury Unicorns also great. Um, I'm. Yeah, I was playing with a lot of them, and okay. uh, I can't wait. To... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's okay. I had to put that in there for them. Yeah, shout out to the Furious Unicorns there, Warren's old team. So, Foot Mob, uh, any shout outs, final thoughts about the league that you wanted to sort of mention here? Uh, yeah, I mean, just shout out to all the players who are watching right now. Uh, some of our big fans, Murakami, might be watching. Um, Platypus might be watching. Thanks to you guys for coming out every single time and uh, supporting the team like you have. Um, I know... For um, Transcendent, uh, we'll be rebranding actually in season two, so we'll be uh, expandable esports now. We got picked up by them, so it should be fun, and we're looking forward to it. Oh, so. fantastic! That's great news. So news breaking here on the round table. So Transcendent will be uh, rebranding themselves for stage two. So deja vu, vote meme today. Uh, mm. Any shout outs to everybody out in Twitch land? Ah, uh, yeah, shout out to everyone watching the stream. Y'all are great. You make this possible. Uh, shout out to my team. Shout out for Charon to uh, showing me outlet in general. Shout out to everyone on my team, like Gigu, Erish, uh, Eternity. Y'all, y'all helped me so much throughout this, and I love all of you. Uh, shout out to all the teams here. Like you all did great, and I love all of you. Thanks for playing. It's been amazing. Oh, how positive! I love hearing that. And yeah, and shout Arash out to you, Gigu. <laughs> Thanks for casting. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, shout out to Reshkigal, who he keeps testing me, uh, and um, who messaged me, like, I think it was seven highlight videos. Uh, so you'll see <laughs> a lot of Reshkigal here on the on the personal highlights at the end of the at the end of the uh, recap. So <laughs> uh, just because everybody you were supposed to submit in by the end of Monday, there were not a lot of submissions. So I wanted to just make sure that everybody heard that. So Cal, oh my God, Cal from Nap Time. Let's hear who do you want to thank or who do you want? Uh, do you, are there any final thoughts uh, from you and the uh, the team at Naptime? I just want to show some appreciation to the admin uh, team for keeping the league so organized. And when we do have complaints, they kind of took care of it, especially with the toxicity that was going on. Um, and then shout out to my my team. Um, they give themselves not enough credit for the effort that they've put in. And I just want to make sure that they know that they're doing a really good job. All righty. And then how about Sin Fu Wu or Su Wu? <laughs> um, uh, so I, I have quite a few shout outs. Go for but it. First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to my amazing team. We've been through so much together as a team, even though I joined them uh, after their run in Scrub Cup. And I laid low just to be with them. And the one person I'd like to shout out the most on the, on the team is Meyer because he has helped me grown 
as a player significantly. Like, it, had I never been coached by him, I would still be like a hard stuck plat trash DPS player. And I still am, but like not to the caliber that I was before I met him. And I'd also like to thank WSAL for helping me like learn a lot. And that kind of personal rivalry between me and their entire team has also helped me grow because I'm a very competitive person. And I honestly wouldn't mind losing to WSAL again because every time I lose to them, I learn something new about myself and how to play the game better. And I'd also like to give a shout out to really everyone within Outlet and everyone involved with Outlet because you guys have helped me grow as a player. And I'm, my ambition is to go pro in Overwatch and be on the big stage, play on the Barclays Center at least once. <laughs> So, hey. I like. Hey, this is a stepping you know. stone, right? The, this is just yeah. This start. is a stepping stone, and I love everyone within uh, <laughs> Outlet. It's like I, I, I just can't show my appreciation enough. Appreciation enough to everyone. So, so thank you, everyone. So we expect to see you there. Maybe, maybe season three of Owl will see uh, Uwu there on stage with maybe one of the teams. That's something you'll see me. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> And For sure, you'll see me there. Yeah. And, and last but not least, Ivy Dragon and Phoenix representing a Lotus. Uh, just uh, final thoughts here on the league and any shout outs to uh, anybody out there in Twitch land. Um, I guess shout outs to everyone in Twitch chat. Thanks for coming by to watch the recap show. <laughs> and <laughs> thank you to Hodo for for um, casting this entire thing tonight. Oh, absolutely. Ivy, how about you? Any, any specific uh, people you wanted to sort of thank or yeah. any comments? Well, uh, first off, yeah, thank you for doing this all. It's very nice of you. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to shout out to the all of the current members of Top Ramen. Like, all of you fucking members that are in the team right now, <laughs> you guys <laughs> became our best fucking friends. Like, oh, I like, I don't I can't put into words, like, how much you guys mean to us. Um, we were looking forward to every match we'd go against them every time. In, yeah, I don't even know how to word it. Like, in this tournament, like, We've, we ran into a lot of, like, really nice teams. I was so hyped to meet all of you guys. Um, but Ramen very quickly became steadfast best friends of Lotus. Um, and all of the practices we had together and all of the actual matches we had together was so, so fucking nice. Um, so I love you guys so much. And I'm looking forward to our team relationships further on down the line. I love you guys. I oh. guess one thing we also want to finish up with is shout out to Lotus and especially our coach, Lego. Thank you for putting up with us. <laughs> <laughs> we work, we've been working really hard and working on our synergy. And despite all the problems we had in the summer with scheduling and people being unavailable with subs, um, we managed to rock, th rock this all through and made it to 12 weeks. And here we are. All right. So that's going to do it, I think, now for our roundtable segment. I wanted to thank everybody here who joined up. I wanted to make sure uh, that you guys had some time here on the recap show. Thank you to Uwu, Brit Boy, Deja Vu, Warren Peace, Foot Mob, Oh My God Cal, uh, Ivy Dragon, and Phoenix. They are your reps here from Outlet, and they just wanted to send out some love to everybody there out in Twitch chat. And hopefully you found some of their uh, comments with regards to the league also very, very enlightening. Uh, admins have, have been watching this also and we'll definitely make sure that uh, any suggestions and any comments that you had would be taken effect but thank you for everybody joining us today here in the round table all right so now we actually with being done with the round table we're going to move to another sort of thank uh section so we're going to actually uh talk about uh, most improved players. So what happened here during uh, during the stages, uh, a lot of the teams were given uh, some, uh, the coaches and players were given uh, a directive by the admins to nominate some most improved players from some of the divisions. So you'll see some of the people here up now from the Snowy and the Strix division. Uh, from Rinse and Shine, uh, Lumbo and Paper Monk. Uh, from Oasis Esports, Brit Boy. Uh, from Transcendent, Celery Man, and Zenadine. Uh, from Don't Envy Us, D Seals, and That Guy, Tyler. From the Strix Division, uh, from Naptine, on Zeppe, uh, Crazy Support. From uh, VMT, Deja Vu, and Existential. 
Uh, from Band by the Way, uh, it was Mailman, and from MSXL, it was Delicious and Mithra. And I want to let you know on some of the comments that that they made with regards to some of the players. With regards to Paper Monk, uh, these were these words were written: Paper has become a tank that has learned to lead by example. He has much greater grasp and understanding of where to position himself and his team. Uh, he uh, has been super apparent and has grown a ton since the beginning of Owlet until now. So uh, big words there for Paper Monk. As for Lumbo, uh, coming into Owlet, Lumbo was a little less prone to flexing and only comfortable with a couple heroes. But after working with the team, he's more likely to swap when the team needs him. His Genji play in particular has grown substantially better and his willingness to swap to any hero has become a huge Asset. So kind words there for both Paper Mump and Lumbo. As for Brit Boy, this was from Coach Luke. Uh, Coach Luke said, I first picked up Brit just based on his upbeat and positive attitude. And anybody who's known and casted with him knows that he does indeed have the positive attitude. But despite, playing, despite barely seeing him play and knowing his rank was pretty low, uh, he had a he felt he had a solid roster and would help sort of get him up during stage one alone. He was he got a way better PC setup. He watched tons of Jane at the end of stage one, and he went from playing at a near bronze level to actually being a diamond grad. He did actually get the, the diamond graduation. So Brit Boy's improvement is a huge kudos, uh, huge kudos from Coach Luke and to the league and watching him play transcendent. Uh, the two the team that just joined. Uh, had uh, two nominations, a Celery Man and Zenadine. Zen Celery Man uh, moved into the role of shot caller this season for Transcendent. Uh, was a role that uh, that I guess that had never been given to Celery Man before, but it was one of the unsung heroes according to the notes. As for Zenadine, when uh, watching the first review, watching the first VOD review, thought that the player had tons of potential and would uh, would be soaring high above where. Uh, the uh, player where Zenadine was in a short period of time and looking forward to expanding his hero pool here in season two. As for D Seals and that guy Tyler, D Seals started off in silver, being a diva main, and then opened up, became amazing. And out of all of the players, uh, D Seals is without a doubt one of the most proud. The coach of Don't Envious is very proud of that uh, of D Seals. And as for that guy Tyler, uh, he's always very been strong mechanically. Uh, before Owlet, Tyler didn't actually lead the team and wasn't sure on team compositions, but as Owlet progressed, Tyler became a vocal leader and improvement and improvement in mechanics was very, very strong. And I think their leadership, uh, both Tyler and DCL's leadership, was very, very important to Don't Envy Us. So kudos to them. Uh, also, uh, there were, uh, I forgot, there were two more here that I didn't actually add from the Snowy Division. It was Cornish and Leo. Uh, the notes here saying both of them, Cornish and Leo Oxicon, both did a fantastic job when their situation demanded it. So not a lot of comments there, but a lot of love here from the coaches at Furious Unicorns. On the Strix side, Don Zeppe was considered the most improved from nap time, and he's uh, basically said that he was taking a lot of advice. He's the, uh, Sci fan was the second most improved from nap time who actually didn't make it here. I've been sort of rushing, trying to make sure that everybody got on. And after some caution, was very vocal and really stepped out of the comfort zone. And because Saifan, it wasn't even his first language, he st was stepped up to become a fantastic player here for nap time. As for Don Zeppe, became the designated jot caller and had a very, very fast response time and would recognize situations ahead of the team to help the team be in situations that were necessary. For Vote Beam today, you heard from Deja Vu, who was the uh, representative here in the round table. Deja Vu and Existential from Nap Time were actually, uh, from Vote Beam today, excuse me, uh, were nominated as both uh, most improved players. They both showed a lot of improvement as per their coach. And over the over time showed a lot uh, as Deja Vu as a DPS meme could swap tank uh, as she could swap into tank roles, play efficiently and along uh, with Deja Vu Existential had uh, led the charge with the match preparation and the rallies to show team support. Every match just gets better and better with both of these players. So kind words there for both Deja Vu and Existential. And for Mailman, uh, there was also another player from Band, by the way. It was a sharp shot to win. For Mailman, we considered the most uh, improved player without a doubt. Uh, he was very low gold when he started. The, the reason he brought him in is because he wanted to be, uh, he, because he was a semi-pro hail 
Halo player, and Halo players are very, very smart player, smart players. So if you didn't know, Mailman played Halo and transitioned into Overwatch. He also hates losing, based according to his coach, and uh, deserved the most improved player award. Uh, was from almost Caesar, and now he is high above Plat, and he is a leader on Band, by the way, and wanted to give kudos to them. Sharp shot to win, who was not mentioned here, but wanted to get kudos as the second player. Uh, although not a star, but is an incredible player. There's a lot of young Genji players, but Sharp uh, isn't the few that is toxic <laughs> for a young kid to show up and VOD reviews all the time. Sharp isn't a starter, but is a true prodigy of Ban, by the way. So kind words there. Uh, for for MSXL, a Delicious and Mithra uh, were given the kudos here as most valuable players. Co a couple notes here. Uh, Delicious was the person most likely to keep the team calm and know how to respond to the team. And Mithra came in as a diva main and moved over to support and did it selflessly. It uh, wasn't necessarily the original role that Mithra played, but uh, the improved game sense and played excellently at support. Kudos from the coach. And there was one more here from Click for Heads that didn't get on here. It was Shooty Burb and Gauntlet 113. Uh, defy, despite being distracted by Osu, uh, Shooty Burb uh, and Guitar Hero, Shooty Burb played 3,000 hours of Smite and was asking questions. Did I grab? Did I do these? But uh, he, he and uh, Gauntlet 113 were nominated as the best, uh, most improved players from Click for Heads. So there are your most improved player and nominations by coaches. Not everybody got on here. We were trying to get every one of the coaches to contribute, but congratulations to these players and a shout out to all of them uh, from making uh, this list. Uh, that was a lot of high praise from a lot of the coaches and a lot of the players from your team that uh, thought that you would deserve this honor. So I'm sorry that everybody didn't actually make it up onto the list. If I would have actually had power an hour and a half ago, I would have been able to finish this slide. So now we move on to our Diamond graduates. Uh, we want to pay respect to our Diamond graduates who made it out of uh, out of gold uh, and platel and are now moving on to greater and better things. Here's to you, our Diamond grads from stage four. Hopefully, uh, you will be able to play again in a league and not, uh, not uh, be able to be drag down <laughs> or be uh, be able to sort of get even better and matriculate even farther into masters and grad masters. Congratulations to you. When we come back, it will be the playoff previews. That's right, we will be previewing the playoffs and all of the matchups here in Owlet. So stay tuned, when we come back, it will be the matches between all of the qualifiers into the playoffs of the Owlet tournament. Stay tuned.
Alrighty then, folks, we are back and we are live. And here with the Outlet Playoff Preview, we are actually going to be uh, featuring four matches in the quarterfinals that will be on Friday. And correct me if I'm wrong, everybody in the channel, the times have not been set yet for any of the matches? Uh, I don't think so. So uh, I think they were uh, it's supposed to be arranged between 7 and 10 o'clock Eastern time. But here are your four matches for the quarterfinals. It is Microsoft Excelsior versus Rinse and Shine, Furious Unicorns versus ClickForHeads.exe, WSOL versus Los Muertos, and Band by the Way versus the Deadlock Gang. If you want to take a look at what the bracket is going to look like, here is the bracket. We are going with a 70s game show theme. Yes, folks, it is going to be bright colors for everyone as we will be featuring this bracket and this type of setup on your overlay. So be aware, starting on Friday, we're going to get an overlay overhaul as we will be going to this game show theme there will be graphics associated there will be uh, player bios that were being created with this sort of formatting so we are going to go and sort of up our game here a little bit in uh in outlet so get ready for some na production values <laughs> coming up here for the outlet tournament and now let's take a look at the playoff preview uh here are your maps for the quarterfinals and the semifinals, both of which are best of five. Uh, for the quarterfinals, we will be going to Route 66, followed by Ilios, Hollywood, Hanamura, and Gibraltar, the tiebreaker of which will be Lee Jung Tower. Uh, if you are lucky enough and skilled enough to get into the semifinals, your map pool for the semifinals are as follows. In this order, it will be Dorado, Nepal, King's Row, Volskaya Industries, Route 66, and Elios will be your tiebreaker. So if we have to go to a map six, it will be Elios, which is the second map in the quarterfinals. And now for the finals maps, it will be a best of seven. So it will be a slog. So get ready, drink your Gatorade, do what you need to do. If you make it to the finals, it will be a long, long match to determine the outlet champion. We will go in this order. It will be Lee Jung Tower, King's Row, Hanamura, Gibraltar, Nepal, Hollywood, and Dorado with Elios being the eighth map tiebreaker. It'll be the team first to four will win the crown of Owlet Tournament Champions. And it ha and trust me, you can go to eight because there are tie possibilities available on King's Row, on Hanamura, on Hollywood. So it could happen. And if we do go to eight, if I remember right, it will be uh, the highest score after eight maps. So who's going to be playing? Let's hear from them. Our first matchup we will be previewing will be WSOL, Weed Stomp on LAN, and Los Muertos, and representing uh, Los Muertos uh, here today is Raven. How are you doing, Raven? I'm doing great. How so about you? I am fantastic. Los Muertos getting a lot of buzz recently based on how you guys have been playing MSXL. You guys have been playing them very, very tightly. Let's go overall. Let's go through your records uh, real quick. You have an overall record of 15 and 9 with a fantastic stage 4 record at 5 and 1. Uh, your 2CP, Escort, Hybrid, and Koth records all above 500 uh, with 2CP and Assault being your worst at 12, 11, and 1. Uh, your best is King of the Hill. So, uh, Raven, Take me, take me through into the playoffs. How has your team been doing? Have you guys been doing any prep work for WSOL going into this match? So what we've done since like every stage is we just keep on improving and improving after each stage, which is what I love to see. And going into playoffs, we have basically kicked it into high gear, high gear with scrims, and we are going to be practicing a lot new uh, synergy that came out like in team comps. Mm -hmm. So... Look forward to seeing some contenders, team comps that were tried out previously. So what do you think is going to be the key to your victory over WSOL here? Is it going to be uh, sort of team continuity? Is it going to be strategy? How do you feel like you can sort of pull the, quote, upset here over WSOL? So to pull the upset, because they are a very, very strong team, and we have scrimmed against them before, 
uh, what we have to do is keep on doing what Los Muertos has done against like other teams that are also as equally good mm -hmm. is pulling out those strats that they don't expect. So like, um, for example, one of the games, what again, in like higher up leagues, um, they were playing on Kings row and like they did big, the big debate with goats. And then they swapped the break to a widow and they popped it off. Strats like that are basically, um, or is what we have up our sleeve to kind of tie that victory. Oh, so, oh no. so this game here is going to be a game of strategy for Muerto. So what would you say to your counterpart here, Machine Eagle from WSOL here, who is waiting to talk? What would you what would you tell him about Los Muertos uh, just right now? Right now, I would say that we do not give up easily. And uh, if they wanted to win, uh, BMing is the best way to go. <laughs> All right. So our representative for the number two overall seed, a weed stomp on land, is Machine Eagle. How are you doing, Machine Eagle? Hey, I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Your team has done fantastically through the majority of the Outlet Tournament. Let's go over your statistics real quick. Overall record of 20 and 4 with a perfect stage 4 record of 6 and 0. Oh. And your uh, your map type records are exemplary with your worst being at Koth at 17 and 11. But your best here is hybrid at 19 and 5. So you just heard from Los Muertos there. They're going to be trying strategically to take you guys down. How have you been feeling going into the playoffs here? Has WSOL been confident in their play going into the quarterfinals of the Outlet Tournament? Well, like you've pointed out, we had a strong stage four and we feel like we're in a good place. But obviously, we can't rest on our laurels because the teams heading into playoffs are going to be the best that Owlet has to offer. So we've been doing a lot of practice, grooming a lot of teams, and really making sure we can focus on fundamentals going forward. Yeah, it's now is not the time to be taking it easy. So what do you think you need to do to be careful of a team like Los Muertos? Because Los Muertos here is not a team to be uh, to sort of look over. So it's not going to be sort of a, a team where you can just sort of step over them and go. They are going to give you fight you tooth and nail. Like, what do you think that you guys are going to have to do to overcome this hurdle uh, to get to the semifinals? Well, we're just going to have to stay focused on our goal. We've played Los Muertos before. We've scrimmed them. They're a very competent team. Mm -hmm. And we'll just have to stay in tip-top shape. But I'm confident that we can put up a good show. Is there anything that you would like to say to Raven uh, of Los Muertos about, uh, about your team that you would maybe want to give a little in? Or, was there, or are you actually very confident in the fact that you guys are going to win this? Well... If I were a betting man, I'd put all my money on my team. <laughs> all of your money? Not even going to say it. all of it? Raven, how about you? Are you a betting man? Would you put your money on WSOL? I mean, I would because I love winning, you know? And I'll get <laughs> money on top of this match. <laughs> All right, so very cordial to some here from WSOL and Los Muertos. They will be your 1-4 matchup here. WSOL is going to be your bracket leader on the side. So WSOL and Los Muertos, time to be determined here on Friday, but they will be your 1-4 matchup. Raven, Machine Eagle, thank you very much. Thank you for having us. All right, for our next matchup, it will be Microsoft Excelsior and rinse and shine. This is another one versus four matchup, and we will start here from rinse and shine. So our representative from RNS is going to be Necra. How are you, Necra? I'm great. How are you, Hodo? I am fantastic. So Necra, thank you so much for your help with arranging all of this the, for the recap show. I know we're actually running long here a little bit, so uh, we're so. But I wanted to thank you very much for your help. Uh, but I well, also. Thank you. Hosting. <laughs> You're welcome. But I also wanted to get into your team. Rinse and Shine is a team that had a pretty sort of shaky start in stage one, but have righted the ship and have made the playoffs as the number eight overall seed, uh, squeezing out uh, Oasis Esports. Uh, overall record of 13 and 11, with, but with a very commendable 4 and 2 record in stage four. Uh, you don't have a map type record that is under 50% either, which is also very, very good. So what do you think Rinse and Shine have to do to overcome the overwhelming odds that is Microsoft Excelsior in this particular case? I think that Microsoft Excelsior has been an incredible force for season one of Outlet. They're 
a really intimidating team and we have some players that are on rinse and shine that remember going up against their original core during the scrub cup finals of Mm -hmm. season five and i think that we're all itching to take another stab at msxl and to prove to them why we should have won scrub cup Oh, that's right. I forgot about this matchup because Rinse and Shine. Oh, that's right. Uh, so is there any lingering sort of feelings there because of the Scrub Cup? Is this 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 is revenge time, right, Necra? I think it's a little bit about revenge, but I can't say that we've thought about them too much during the season mm-hmm. because we've been so focused on doing well in our division and getting better. And we've seen so much improvement from the players. It's been really phenomenal. So uh, any special strats or any special planning uh, going to happen here? Or how have your sort of, or maybe should I ask better, has like, have you scrimmed specifically or done any specific research uh, and and, uh, for Microsoft Excelsior for this match? Or are you guys confident going into Friday uh, that you guys are ready? Well, I can't reveal all of our secrets. Okay. Because that's too many people watching the stream. <laughs> <laughs> but suffice but, what I... <laughs> but, but suffice it to say, you are confident about your about your play here. I Friday. think that what Rinse and Shine has done during the past couple of weeks has shown that they are adaptable and that they are strong and they're not going to give up in this fight. And I think that we are going to surprise everybody on Friday when we play against MSXL because we've been working on a lot to be able to play against them and play against them well. All right. And what would you say to Nyx, your counterpart here that is waiting here in the Showcase Live channel, uh, about Rinse and Shine? Is there a warning that you would want to give him regarding your team? Now I think what I've said can speak for itself. All right. All right. So, Nyx, how are you doing, buddy? (laughs) Hey, Hoda, how are you? <laughs> so, you're our representative here from Microsoft Excelsior. Uh, you are the number one overall seed here in Owlet with a 21-3 and record and a stage record of 5-1 and one from stage 4. Your map type record is exemplary. So, Microsoft Excelsior here has been top dog for a while, Nick. So, like, how hard is it to play from up top here, knowing that you're going to be going into the quarterfinals with everybody looking forward to sort of taking down the the big dog? Um. Well, I'm not really too worried. Obviously, uh, it's going to be a challenge because these are all playoff teams. Mm-hmm. But uh, we have uh, we locked our playoff spot stage two, so we've had the most uh, time to like prepare. Obviously, out of every other team. Yep. So we've been obviously trying different strats we could use, and uh, honestly, like we've been just practicing scrimming very, uh, very often through the weeks, and uh, we've come to like know our main strategies and stuff, and we're feeling really good. So speaking of scrims, I from what I've heard when I had Commander Huey on last uh, last stage recap, uh, you guys scrim a lot. Can you sort of get into that? Like you guys scrim like what is it three times a week? Is that right, or are you, are you still keeping up that sort of scrim schedule? Uh, it's mis- basically whoever can like come, but usually it's like at least two or three a week. We uh we want to like not really be washed up mm. and uh, just be better for the playoffs. Yeah. So, so Nix, if you had one thing to say to Necra here in the channel, what would you say about Microsoft Excelsior? What warning would you give to them? Um, a warning that I'd give is we're gonna be trying some new stuff, uh, and the fact that I think MSXL is obviously the best team in the league, but uh, the thing that uh, shows us apart from them is uh, I think we could beat them on a good day. And also on a bad day, so I'm pretty confident. All right. Uh, Necra, any response to Nick's there? Uh, he can beat you on a good day or a bad day. Still hoping it's going to be a bad day on Friday when you guys lose. <laughs> All righty. No, <Nah>, dude. <laughs> So this is a little bit of a rematch from the Scrub Cup 5 final. We will see this in the quarterfinal. Time to be determined on this match. This 1-4 match is going to be spicy. Necra, Nix, thank you so much for giving your, your time here for this match preview for both teams. See you on Friday. See ya. Thanks, Hodo. Uh, oh, you're welcome. All right. Thanks. Yeah, so we're going into our third matchup. 
Uh, it will be Banned by the Way and The Deadlock Gang. So uh, The Deadlock Gang and Banned by the Way here are 2-3 matchup. Uh, so as we... I will talk to the Deadlock Gang representative first here. It will be Vectrius from the Deadlock Gang. How you doing, Vectrius? Hey, man. I'm kind of tired. How are you? Uh, yeah, it is late. It is 1030 here on the East Coast. Luckily, I have power, so I'm surviving. <laughs> that's, that's good, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so Deadlock Gang here had a rough stage four. Uh, overall record, you guys qualified... Uh, to the playoffs here because your record in stages one and two were exemplary, uh, taking down WSOL, beating them out to the automatic spot. But your overall record here, uh, 14 and 10, but with a one and five stage four record, your record by map type, uh, usually all of them looks like they were over 50%, except for the hybrid maps where you go nine and 15, which is very, very troubling here. Did the diamond graduates really affect the team makeup of deadlocking? Yeah, we had a lot of synergy issues going into stage three. Mm -hmm. uh, basically because the original Deadlock gang, most of us are actually friends. Like three of us go to the same college. We know each other very well. Uh, Branjo, our first Diamond graduate, is actually my roommate. Oh, and okay. And so, it, yeah, it really <laughs> messed with us coming in and like picking up new players because we were already so used to playing with each other. We didn't really need like... Because a lot of people stress comms and things like that. Mm -hmm. We had our own style of doing things anyway. And so it mostly just messed with synergy. So, like, how how has the synergy been working here in, later in the uh, in the later stages? I know that now you're incorporating new players like Sparkle, who came in and started playing on a regular basis for Love Gangster, who had to graduate out uh, on the Diva. Like, has it been a little bit of a rough patch here? Or are you guys feeling confident going into this match with Band? By the way, that you still have a shot at winning this whole thing. Um, I mean, the new pill. Ugh, sorry, the new players we picked up. Are Really, they're really good, honestly. It's just a synergy issue where we're not used to what they can do compared to what our old teammates can do. Mm -hmm. um, and mostly our plan is focusing on the future. We have plans since we have so many Diamond graduates to actually have like a main team and then split off and have an outlet team as well. Um, tryouts TM. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought I'd announce that. No, why not? Go for it. But we... Uh, I mean, Band, by the way, is a good team. I'm pretty sure they'll beat us. But because our eyes, a lot of stage four has just mostly been on the future. Mm. So it's more like sort of looking forward for, for deadlocking here. But uh, I mean, honestly, though, if you are uh, for uh, Band, by the way, who's Mr. Crit here, who is actually working with the, uh, the coach, uh, is coaching sort of Band, by the way, what would you say to them? Uh, going into this matchup, like, are you you say that maybe you, they have the upper hand on you guys, but like, you know, what would they need to look out for for deadlocking right now going into this quarterfinal matchup? I mean, I'd say just don't sleep on our DPS because our our tank line is really good. Danger Man is always aggressive. I know the casters really love him. Oh, uh, we but do. We do indeed. Yeah, <laughs> one one thing we would always flame him about because casters would always be like, oh, Danger Man carry. He only carries because we know how to like support him. Mm -hmm. Our our DPS can go in and back him up. I I've, I've been playing with him so long. It's one reason why I still play Lucio is I speed boost in because he always knows what to do when he's aggressive. Yeah, and so I just say just just don't sleep on us. Yeah, having a fan a uh, fantastic tank like Danger Man is always sort of money in the pocket there, ready to just get to get unleashed. So, uh, for band by the way, it is Mr. Crit. How you doing, Mr. Crit? I'm doing well. How about you, Hoda? I'm doing good. I, I know that you've just started working with Band, by the way, recently. But uh, let's go overall some of the, go over the statistics here for the team. Overall record of 17 and seven with a stage four record of four and two, and a and a good map type record with Escort being the map uh, map type that I think Band, by the way, is best at. But Mr. Crit, I know you just started working with the team because you were with Top Ramen in the early stages of Owlet. Correct. What, yeah. So. But what have you seen from Band, by the way, that makes them a force here to be reckoned with in the Outlet uh, playoffs? Honestly, uh, Band, by the way, uh, when it comes to them, it's just determination. Uh, everybody on the team is just so dedicated to just improving and being the best that they can be. And especially like since playoffs are right around the corner, uh, we've been putting in a lot of work on our end uh, to prep us uh, for... Uh, this upcoming weekend, so a, a lot more scrims, a lot more 
VOD reviews, anything we can do uh, to make sure uh, we're all set and good uh, for Friday. Yeah. Has there any, uh, so a lot of VOD reviews, uh, have you gone and done any scrims with any teams just to make sure that any strategies that you might be trying uh, might be ready to go or perfected? We have actually uh, lately. Uh, the past week or two has been very uh, has been very scrim based. We've had a lot of scrims uh, going on because our main focus is just to grind out and sort out our tiny little problems mm -hmm. uh, to make sure that we're the best that we can be. And we've definitely uh, during uh, that kind of segment, we've been practicing a lot of interesting comps uh, on some maps uh, that'll definitely uh, be very in interesting uh, to see. Uh, in that match, so be sure to stay tuned for that, because that's definitely going to be fun. And what do you think of the overall map pool for the quarterfinals? <clears throat> do you think that plays into your strengths and weaknesses? I think it does. Um, all, uh, the map pool uh, in itself, uh, Ben, by the way, their their strongest uh, map type has always been Escort, uh, as shown on the statistics. Um, and there's quite a bit of Escort maps in there, so mm -hmm. we can definitely use that to our advantage. Um, and we've been brushing up on our other map types that we haven't been so good at, uh, so we can kind of even the playing field with, with how good we are uh, on everything else. So I think we have a pretty good shot when it comes to the map pool. And what would you say here to Vectrius of, De uh, of the Deadlock Gang to be, like, what warning would you give about Ban, by the way? So, um, what I would say, um, is, uh... We're definitely uh, very ready um, for this match. Um, we've been improving a lot on our tank line, uh, so uh, definitely be on the lookout. Don't don't sleep on our tanks. Um, and our DPS have been on the grind uh, since I'm a, a DPS assistant coach. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been helping a lot uh, in the back lines, kind of refining everything to make them in tip top shape. So our DPS are are as as best as they can be. Uh, so, uh, definitely be on the lookout. Absolutely. So, all right, Vectrius, Mr. Crit, thank you so much. This game is also to be determined right now. I don't have the times here. I'm going to actually just check real quick to see if the, uh, the times have been actually posted. Nope, they are still TBD here based on what I can see in the caster channel. So, our 2-3 matchup, uh, Band, by the way, and Deadlock Gang here. Thank you so much for both of you for joining us in the preview. Thanks for having us. Thank yep. you, yeah. And our final match, another 2-3 matchup, is between Furious Unicorns and Click for Heads. Now, for uh, C4H, we do have Shooty Burb. How you doing, Shooty Burb? Pretty good. Oh, you are going to be representing C4H here, and you are the three seed going up against the Furious Unis, who happen to be a favorite here of the Owlet, uh, Owlet people, a lot of people rooting for the Unicorns here. How do you feel like you're going up against a, a popular team about taking them down, possibly? Uh, well, to be honest, I never talked about the Furious Unicorns before any, like, before playoffs. Uh -huh. I've never watched it. I don't think I've watched very many of their games before playoffs. So they're not popular in my eyes. I feel pretty confident about going into this. All right. So let's take a look at your overall record and stage record stuff. So your overall record is 15 and 9. Uh, a stage 4 record of 5 and 1, which is very, very good. Uh, your, uh, the team, though, Click for Heads, I think was a, uh, a reform team. So your map statistics are lightly, slightly lower than the rest of the teams here in Outlet. But it seems like you are very even on hybrid escorting Koth with a 10-7-1 record on Assault. Uh, how does the map pool, do you think, will affect you guys' gameplay? Do you think that the map pool is favorable uh, for you guys here in the quarterfinals? Uh, I feel like a few of the maps are definitely were better on, we feel like, mm -hmm. so that is helpful. We've been practicing them a lot lately, so we're, we're pretty ready. Uh, I, don't, I don't Are there any maps with plants? I feel like uh, their Lucio gets stuck on plants quite a while, so you should watch out for that. <laughs> But, yes, uh, that was a that was uh, for those who don't understand. That was a submitted blooper that happened uh, in the, in the match. Uh, but uh, I don't know if they're going to be plants uh, in any of the maps. But uh, you guys uh, have uh, been a bit of a giant killers. Uh, some of the victories that you had through the stages have been very very good. So uh, to me, it sounds like there is no fear of the furious unicorns here going into this uh, into the quarterfinals. Is that right? 
Uh, I'm not not particularly. We had to face off against WSOL, MSXL, band by the way, all in one stage, stage three, mm-hmm. and we were able to, we were able to take one game off of one of them, and the other two were pretty close. So, Furious Unicorns, they're right below those three, but we're not scared. We're pretty we're we're ready for it. I think. Oh, all right. So, if you had something to say to Flab here, the coach of the Furious Unicorns, what would you say about your team? Is there a warning or maybe a a a bit of uh? Uh, of advice that maybe you would give Furious Unicorns? Uh, I wouldn't really say this warning. Um, to be honest, uh, we, we usually just kind of wing things. There's nothing to be prepared for. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you're going to be on the fly, flying by the seat of your pants. Is that basically what you're saying? That is very much the situation. All right. So uh, Flab of Jack Bubby. From Furious Unicorns, how are you? Hey, what's up? How are you doing? I'm good. So your team was a little worried about you coming on the on the uh, the uh, the head-to-head matchup show here, thinking. Wait, that... were they? <laughs> they were they were thinking that your mouth maybe might end up disqualifying them from the playoffs. But I said no. Okay. Flab is great. Flab is fantastic. Flab will provide spice to the head-to-head matchup here and furious unicorns here the number two seed on their side of the bracket uh how are you guys going into the playoffs here it seems like your team has sort of meshed really really well in stage four and are going in very very confident am i wrong about that uh no you're not actually uh as you can see like stage four is actually uh, one of our best records mm-hmm. of all in the stages and i think we have finally ironed out on what kind of play style we want to play or how we want to play our own game in these matches so yeah we're pretty confident so yeah you had a five in one stage four record with a 17 and seven overall record which was very very good you had a little bit of shaky time there in the middle but you sort of righted the ship and your cough record is exemplary at 17 and 12 2 cp though at 13 and 11 uh, is probably your worst map type how do you feel that the maps for the quarterfinals are going to affect you guys here uh, is there anything that maybe might scare you a little, or do you think that those maps are going to play right into Furious Unicorn's wheelhouse? Um, personally, I like all these maps that were picked up, so um, I do have everything planned out, um, even though the team may think that we don't. <laughs> but I think, I think it's, pretty, it's going to go pretty well, unless one of our Lucias gets stuck on the plant, of course, but other than that, we should be fine. So, uh, how have you been sort of prepping going into this match? Have you been watching a lot of Click for Heads tape, or have you just been doing a lot of scrims going into this match? Um, so personally, I've been well working on a lot of um, strat sheets, um, doing this and that. Um, personally, we haven't played against Click for Heads before, so I've been looking at their vods. Um, very excited to play against them because they've thrown some shades towards us. So uh, I will not say anything. But just get prepared to lose after that. <laughs> Is there a bit of warning or maybe uh, advice that you would give Click for Heads when facing your team? Um, I'm known to have some weird ass strats. So you can have that, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> So are, are, are so are you worried at all about Click for Heads? Are you confident that you will make it into the finals of the Outlet tournament? Uh, I mean, of course we're worried. I mean, they're they're like one of the new teams that came along because of other teams like just mm-hmm. kind of fading out, um, and they've done themselves really well. Okay. Um, I wouldn't necessarily call them one of the greatest team out there, but like you said, they are the giant killers, but they're not the unicorns killers. So uh, <laughs> I think we'll give them that. So you are the mythical creature that they cannot kill, Shooty Burb. Uh, final thoughts here on the matchup with Furious Unicorns. Uh, any thoughts to what uh? what uh flab has just said i think uh i think we're going to be able to take down the unicorn i think that's the last giant we need to slay i mean we didn't slay a few of them but actually no there's one more after the after we beat them we're gonna we're gonna take the rest of the tournament getting the rest of them uh we are oh we'll get them (laughs) we are the lowest sr team or average sr team in the playoffs so Mm -hmm. we have a lot to prove and not a whole lot to lose i think we're going to do well hey you know what uh, sr is just a number uh, yeah. Along with my age, it is just a number that that, that does not matter. <laughs> so you know, don't let that low SR stuff get into your heads because it's no, about it it's not. Yeah. So it's teamwork here. So that is your final matchup 
uh, between Furious Unicorns, the 2-3 matchup. I have times for all of the games just posted to me by Necra. So I don't know if you guys know what time you guys were playing on Friday, but uh, Band, by the way, and Deadlock Gang will be the first game on Friday at 7.45 Eastern Standard Time. It will be 4.45 Pacific uh, for that. Uh, at 9 p.m. Eastern, we have two matches. It will be Weed Stump on Land and Los Muertos, and Furious Unicorns and Click for Heads will be going head-to-head -head at 9 o'clock. Uh, uh, and then the final game of the evening will be the Scrub Cup 5 rematch of Muds, uh, Microsoft Excelsior and Rinse and Shine. I don't know if either of you both knew your times, but you guys are playing on 9 Eastern time on Friday. So, so looking forward to both of the matches. Shooty Burb, Flab, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, and hopefully we get an epic game between both of your teams. Yeah, I hope so. Thanks for having us. Yep. Uh, Thanks for having us. This is just for the... Can I give a shout out to Fat Mike from the Twitch chat, though? Absolutely, Fat Mike. Hey, Fat Mike. Uh, for, uh, also, shout out from myself, also, who visited my channel when I was screaming uh, P.O.E. <laughs> so, Fat Mike, lots of love from you from, from Hodo here, too. So, thank you, both of you, as we're going to now go into something a little bit different. Uh, we are actually going to go to our bloopers. Now... People have actually mentioned to me that they wanted like a sort of compilation of bloopers. But unfortunately, like I don't know if bloopers work in a compilation format. Uh, so going through, we were looking at a lot of videos to see what was going on with regards to the bloopers. So these are the things that we sort of found. This is an example of one of the things that was found here from Dire Boyd. Let's take a look. It looks like Darlis actually did get Benzito uh, as Pandu is ulting uh, the monkey. Oh, oh no, Pandu sort of jumped oh, no. and, and <laughs> fell into the oh, hole. Buddy. That was a match between Top Ramen and Don't Envious, and Pandu ulting and jumping in a hole. So those are the types of clips that we will be seeing uh, with regards to what happened when I was playing in Outlet. So our first example here is climbing is hard. Now, as, a, as you know, there are only a certain amount of characters that can climb here in, in, uh, in Overwatch, one of them being Hanzo, the other one being Genji. And sometimes when climbing just doesn't happen, uh, you end up falling, and where you fall, you just don't want to be there. So let's take a look at what happened to Lumbo here uh, as he was a Genji trying to climb a wall. Taking down Vic himself, so Rinse and Shine says, this is our last fight, we're gonna make it count. This Earth Shatter, however, from the Oxycon, takes down a few members, Lumbo on point now with this- No! And he tries to climb, and the wall climb does not connect. He's down for the last bit of this fight. We're in overtime. Furious Unicorns trying to keep Rinse and Shine off the point. Um, so there uh, you have, uh, you got to be super careful. He looked like he was about to climb a wall and ult. Unfortunately, all he found was death. So Lumbo, I'm sorry for that. That got posted directly to, uh, to me and was actually sent to me multiple times. So unfortunately, that will live in infamy forever. Next is, uh, this one hurts my heart because uh, as for all you Tracer players know, uh, recall is super, super important for you guys to survive. You only have 150 health. There's only so much that you can do. You use recall when your health is getting low uh, to sort of save yourself. But you also need recall to sort of save you from other situations. And if you don't have it up, some things like this could happen to poor old Blue. Big one. Yep, focus on focus. I got one. I can't get Mercy. Mercy, 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 Mercy. Oh, God. Now, Lucy. I'm, I'm really low. <laughs> you guys are mega. <laughs> so, Blue there, not being careful, uh, fell off the clip, punching the recall button that was unfortunately not available. Uh, poor Blue, I'm so sorry. Uh, that will also live in infamy for a while. That was sent by Leo. Uh, of your teammate at uh, <laughs> at, uh, at Furious Unicorns, uh, you can say thank you to him with regards to that particular clip. Uh, the next clip is actually a combo clip. Uh, this was actually a match that actually featured a 5K, uh, but it was how that 5K was earned, which was a little weird. So Brave PLM here from Naptime, uh, God giveth and God taketh away in this particular clip. Uh, as you can see, as the camera focuses on him, just as a Hammond was dis uh, just sort of 
letting go of the mines, and you'll see what happened here in this clip. They can turn this into something a little different here. Uh, Orchestra has charged up onto the point, and High Noon has come out. Brave is on the side here. He does have a couple kills he can maybe get. He gets Vestrally taken out. The Graviton Surge, but unfortunately gets knocked out by oh. Hammond's bombs, as most of the team does. They need to be careful. Those are hard to spot in a team fight. Shooty Burb doing very well with the. So Shooty Burb there getting all almost a 6K, but Brave there getting the the getting the highlight with regards to rolling directly into the minefield and killing himself after high nooning and getting down the Moira. So unfortunately, uh, that one will live forever. Next in our category of team fails. Uh, it is going to go to Aftermath. Uh, I named this one, Let's Fight on the Point. Okay, I'll stand right here. For those who don't know, this was a match uh, between Aftermath and I think it was done, NB or I think it was Oasis Esports, where they needed to sort of stay on the point to sort of make sure that they even had a chance to win this map, but didn't go as planned. So let's take a look. <laughs> Okay, so we're going in fast. Right onto the point here. Bring them fight straight to the point. Is Oasis. Oh, Rankers. Okay. Okay. Uh, oh! <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and unfortunately there for Aftermath, uh, they were straddling the line a little too close in that particular case. Uh, just on the other side of the line is where you needed to fight, and unfortunately, poor old Ad, that <laughs> will live in infamy forever. The casters were un sort of sure what exactly had happened. They had to actually replay that to figure out, but uh, all of Aftermath were on the other side of the box and ended up giving up the point for free. So unfortunate fail there by Aftermath, but you can laugh about it now because that was actually very funny to watch in real time because there were a lot of confused people on the map, so they didn't exactly know what happened. Now, on our final clip, I think here, uh, Pressing Q sometimes will win you games, will get you kills, uh, will get you the glory that you were looking for. But unfortunately, in this particular case, for my favorite named person, Dunkin' Donut, pressing Q here was not necessarily the right thing to do in this particular situation. So let's take a look and see what happened to Donut here. Special bonus, this was actually sent from the comms, not actually casted in Owlet. So this was from the personal comms here of Transcendent. So you'll get to see what actually happens when she presses Q. Up there. Yeah, that's fine. They have Shatter as well. Mm-hmm. Hanzo's playing left side. Oh, I killed myself! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> so... Trying to boost up, uh, try, I don't know if her boost or knockback or boop was anywhere near her Q button, but unfortunately, right as she hit the wall, the Q button exploded in her face and basically took her out and gave the other team a 5v6. I think I was actually casting that match when that happened. The camera wasn't actually on her at the time, so luckily for us, uh, we got that great highlight there uh, from the outlets. Now, I've been... If it wasn't for a power outage, uh, the last clip would have been the bug here on Anubis. Unfortunately, I do not have time to show it to you, but there was a bug on Anubis that messed up one of the games where uh, the team would actually contest, but it didn't allow them to contest. Uh, I think it got them to 100%, and it was very, very unusual all around. They call it now the Anubis bug game. Uh, I will actually get that and feature that in the year-end Owlet Season 1 footage. But those were some of the blooper clips that we were sent in here. And, you know, if you can't laugh at yourself, who can you laugh at? So give some of these guys some uh, some ribbing here in the channel. But, you know, it was really nice of them. In the end, Dunkin' Donut was actually the one who sent me that clip of her ulting into a wall. So, you know, very nice of her to send me that. And there's good spirits here. It happens to everyone, folks. Like, you know, bad things happen when you play Overwatch. There's just, no, sometimes there's 
just nothing that you can do about it, and all you can do is just sort of laugh. So as we sort of close off here our stage recap show, it will be our final clips of what was sent in. A lot of people didn't have a chance to send in because you were prepping for the playoffs. It completely completely understand but here are the best play of the uh, play of the game clips that were submitted to me from uh, players here in the outlet tournament if you didn't get a chance if yours didn't get featured here I will bring it up at the end after the playoff and we do the recap thank you so much for joining me today here for this stage four recap and oh oh never mind I forgot one more thing uh, I just was reminded here by Necra as I go to the bracket there is a quote playoff bracket challenge that I forgot to sort of mention. So, folks, just to, as a reminder to you, you get to see the bracket here up on the stage. Thank you, Necro, for reminding me. Uh, there is going to be a bracket link that is going to show up here uh, at the end of the day, and I think it'll show up tomorrow morning, where you can play uh, the Owlet Bracket Challenge. So the way that this is going to work is you open up the bracket link and you put a copy of, you then save a copy of the PDF to the channel and you watch the playoffs and uh, sort of cheer for what you're going for. So it will be the, the bracket challenge uh, the PDFs that you will need to submit are due by 7 p.m. Friday the 28th. They will close the channel off for submissions on the 28th. So how this works is that you will get three points for predicting the winner of the matches from the quarterfinals, the semifinals, and the finals. So three points each for predicting the correct winner. Five points for overall maps, wins, and losses. So you get to guess what the... Uh, the uh, the map wins loss total is for uh, each map, and then two points for the correct guess for individual map score for each team. So if you think, for example, that Microsoft Excelsior and Rinse and Shine will go three two, three to Microsoft Excelsior, two to Rinse and Shine, or three to Rinse and Shine and two to Microsoft Excelsior, and that score comes out, you get a bonus two points for predicting the score. So the winner will then be announced after the finals are done. Uh, and uh, there is a prize for the winner, which uh, was not mentioned here in the bracket contest uh, right up here that was given to me by Bort. But there is a nice prize here for the winner of the bracket challenge. Uh, so just want to make sure so that everybody participates in that. If you're into fantasy sports or into any of those sort of like, you know, online gaming with regards to sports, we're trying to give you guys an extra feel, trying to make the viewing a little bit more exciting, making sure that everybody's sort of watching the games and cheering on your favorite team, if not uh, just because you like them, to win the bracket contest. Uh, I'm wanting to go through and make sure that I haven't missed anything else with regards to the recap here. Uh, oh, the playoff teams here also as a final announcement. Uh, rosters are due at the end of today, uh, 926 at 11:59. If you're looking for your roster and you need to lock it up, please email an admin and let them know that you need to rock. You need to lock up your rosters here by the end of the day here, which you have an hour to do. Uh, team info sheets uh, are due at 11:59. So, quick reminder to the playoff teams that might be listening uh, to the uh, to the cast right now that you, your sheets are due, and you got to make sure they get into an admin here before the end of the day. Other than that, I think I think I have covered everything else. I mentioned the All Star Game. Remember, All Star voting will close tonight at 11:59 p.m. MVPs, coaches need to submit your MVPs by 11:59 also. But that is going to do it for me tonight. Uh, I have been your caster, Hodahori. Enjoy the stage four best of clips, the individual submitted clips. You saw a lot of these play of the games here in the recap uh, video that was shown earlier. Uh, kudos to Dire Boyd there for the production value. And thank you to everyone who joined and made this sort of stage recap show really, really enjoyable. Everybody from all of the, there's too numerous to mention, but I wanted to thank everybody for watching this. Thank you to everyone who participated also. Thank you to Necra uh, for constantly reminding me that I should be reading off my script. <laughs> and uh, thank you to everyone. And please, 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 please tune into the playoffs on Friday and cheer on your favorite outlet team as they make their run to the grand finals on Sunday, 930. Have a good evening and enjoy these clips of stage four.
demon. No, wait, no, he didn't. It's not the whole thing. Back into the sh- 